Welcome to Syria's Week at the Global Table. Join us as we find out what a toddler does with the super bold flavor of sour cherry and a whole entire head of garlic. So this week we're in Syria, which is in the Middle East, right up against the Mediterranean Ocean and then pushing over inwards towards the Fertile Crescent Plain. This is a land of mountains and deserts and lots of farmland and beautiful produce and many interesting foods like cherries and pomegranate and um, lots of tart, sour, intense flavor. This week was fun. The first thing we tried was the Syrian version of lentils. And this is a recipe I learned from Clifford A. Wright's uh, Mediterranean Feast, which is a fantastic book if you love Mediterranean food. And the lentils are really super easy. You just cook them up, but the key in this recipe, I think, is the garlic. I used an entire head of garlic for two cups of raw lentils. And what's really interesting about this is by the time you cook the garlic down and you add it with the lemon juice and there's pomegranate syrup in there, which is a very typical ingredient in the region, and then some um, a whole bunch of cilantro, it all cooks together and you don't have this huge impact of garlic that you might if you just started chewing on a raw head of garlic. Um, at least I didn't think so. What does my necklace look like? A flower. What else does it look like on the table? A lentil. <laughs> lentil is right here. <laughs> Some of the most fun about this was using the pita bread to pick it up, but you could also use it as a side, so this would be a really fun, kind of warm side dish in the summer with your grilled foods, which is exactly what we did. Seaweed in there. That's called Swiss chard. Oh boy. We paired it with a delicious meatball that's made with baharat, which is a um, spice blend popular in Syria and other countries in the region. And so these meatballs, they would call kebab. They're very small and about the size of a large olive. And they're seasoned with cinnamon and nutmeg and just lots and lots of flavor in there. And then that flavor sits in the meat before you roll them for a little while. And then when you roll them, you you get this big burst of cinnamon, nutmeg, and um, allspice, and you can grill them, and you alternate with the meatballs with sour cherries. So every bite of that sort of earthy, savory goodness, you get that bright burst of sour cherry. And so what I found was that even though there were some really bold flavors in the cooking this week, they were really well balanced and um, it, wasn't, it wasn't as shocking as I expected it to be. Now the fun thing about the meatballs to Ava was the process of eating them. So getting them off the skewer and then what do you do with them? Do you eat them with a bite of sour cherry? That was a really big question for her. Or do you dip it in some yogurt, which is something that I put on the table that I thought would be delicious. So she had her own opinions and I thought it would be funny if she pretended the camera was a little kid. Oh, um, baby camera, I want you to know Dip it like this, then, um. Huh? It's good, right? Good. So the lesson this week is really simple. If you see a recipe with an entire head of garlic, or you see a recipe with a whole bunch of sour cherries and that seems a little bit much for you, don't initially write it off because a lot of times bold flavor isn't 
as bold as you would think, once it gets cooked down, once it's um, alternated with meat and, and the flavors are balanced in such a way that that bright, bold flavor is actually a relief and sort of um, a, an awakening for your mouth instead of a shock. So um, have a little fun, go bold with your flavors, and enjoy your Syrian week at the global table. So until next time, Happy stovetop travels from our global table adventure to yours. Mm -hmm.